So now we're moving on to product and ingredient information and warnings. Mentioned previously, products such as chromium uh, picolinate, zinc picolinate, conjugated linoleic acid were on the on hold list until the uh, Natural Health Products Director determined how they could move forward with them, which was in the production of a monograph for those three substances. So currently, products on hold, we've, only, we've narrowed it down to fungal source enzymes. And the challenge there is a lack of evidence for safety and efficacy. So an example of a fungal source enzyme would be protease for a aspergillus. So if you have any of these types of uh, products or ingredients, your application is not moving anywhere at the moment. In terms of Schedule F, uh, Schedule F is a listing of substances for human and veterinary use that can be used only or available only on prescription. So within the last year or two, Health Canada did a review of naturally sourced ingredients on Schedule F and reviewed the science assessments of 11 of those ingredients to determine whether they should stay on Schedule F or modifications should be made to allow for some over-the-counter uses. So there were three projects um, proposed. There was a consultation period which has since ended, but the content project 1577 looked, recommended the removal of four substances. So they recommended that oil of apiol, centella asiatica extract and active principles, deanol in its salts and derivatives, as well as theobromine in its salts should be removed entirely from Schedule F. So this would allow over-the-counter uses of those four ingredients at any dosage in any, any application. Uh, project 1651 uh, proposed qualifiers for prescription versus over-the-counter use for, very, for four different substances. So for example, they said, suggested that prescription status would only be for injectable forms of dopamine in its salts. Anything other than an injectable form would be allowed for over-the-counter use. The same with Project 1656. Again, it put qualifiers on three different substances to determine when they could be used for over-the-counter use versus when a prescription would be required. So as mentioned, the consultation is now closed. Uh, Dicentra did submit comments generally supportive of the proposals, but with some recommended changes to uh, increase uh, the over-the-counter use of some of these ingredients. So in the absence of any strong objections, these proposals should be going to final publication in Canada Gazette Part 2 within about six to eight months. So hopefully we'll be seeing uh, more ingredients available for over-the-counter use as natural health products. On January 29th of this year, an advisory was issued to consumers regarding the presence of glucomannan in natural health products to the effect that if you did not take sufficient water or other fluids when uh, taking these products, there was a risk of choking and or blockage of the throat, esophagus, and intestine. So there are authorized products on the market. Health Canada has uh, authorized products for appetite reduction, weight management, and the treatment of constipation, as well as the treatment of cholesterol levels. So we are talking about authorized products. However, given the potential um, of choking and blockage based on international adverse events, there are required uh, labeling changes that must be used. So specific uh, directions for use, you must say take or mix this product with at least eight ounces of water or other fluid. Taking this product with insufficient liquid may result in choking and or blockage of the throat, esophagus, or intestine. Do not take immediately before going to bed as well as their cautions and warnings for pregnant and breastfeeding women and people with diabetes, as well as if you have difficulty in swallowing, do not use this product. As well, known adverse reactions include chest pain, vomiting, difficulty swallowing and breathing, and if you experience any of these, you should be seeking medical attention. So these products that are currently on the market will be relabeled to have these warnings and contraindications and directions for use included on the label. And again, you can find the advisory at this website. So in terms of other Natural Health Product Directorate process updates, uh, the first is the International Trade Certificate. These, the International Trade Certificate for Natural Health Products intended for export only as of tomorrow, April 1st, will no longer be issued by the Natural Health Products Directorate. 
It's considered that this application, which was previously referred to as a Type 2 certificate, provides limited information to the importing country and as well is not consistent with other international export certificate certification schemes. So this certificate uh, for products that are not authorized for sale in Canada. So effective tomorrow, these certificates will no longer be issued. The Type 1 International Trade Certificate for licensed products, for either authorized products, as well as the Type 3, which is for GMP compliant products, they will continue to be issued. In terms of process improvements for the International Trade Certificate, the template for the certificate will be available on the Health Canada website so that applicants can download them, complete them, and mail them into Health Canada where they'll be reviewed and signed off. So this should expedite the process for receiving an international trade certificate. So again, you can find these guidance documents at these websites. As well, the Centre is conducting a survey to determine the impact of this change on the industry. So I would encourage you after this presentation to go to www.dicentra.ca and complete the survey. Uh, the comments will compile, confidentiality will be maintained, and the comments will be discussed with the Natural Health Products Directorate as appropriate. The licensed natural health product database data extract is now available. The licensed natural health product database basically contains product specific information on those products that have been issued a product license. However, they've taken this information and put it in a format that can be used uh, by stakeholders, uh, can be downloaded and put in a database and made searchable. So it's just a different format of the information that you can uh, manipulate for your own purposes. So the files that are available include those on products, purposes, doses, risks, companies, medicinal ingredients, and route of administration, as well as non-medicinal ingredients and names. So again, it's information that's available to you to download, put in a database, and manipulate and search as you see fit. And again, you can see the link where this information is available, and it will be updated periodically. The next topic is the Natural Health Products Directorate Regulatory Review Action Plan, specifically Phase 1. When the regulations were promulgated, there was a commitment by the Natural Health Products Directorate to review the regulatory framework and its implementation within four to five years. So from March to May 2007, there was a consultation with stakeholders regarding the implementation and interpretation of the regulations and a final report on the regulatory review was posted in November 2008. So out of that regulatory review consultation, approximately 50 policy issues were identified by stakeholders and they were organized into a framework of four themes, specifically the site licensing process, the product licensing process, product content, and post-market issues. So the action plan describes the four themes and provides an outline of the first phase of the plan, which covers fall 2009 to fall 2010. So the activities that fall into phase one are looking at the food natural health product interface. We've seen um, ongoing activities in that area, the cosmetic NHP interface, Schedule F initiative, which we just talked about, security packaging, the compliance plan. This would relate to how uh, the regulations will be enforced uh, once the backlog has been uh, dealt with and products will require licenses before going to market. International trade certificates, and we've looked at part of that where they're no longer issuing the Type 2 certif cert certificates effective tomorrow. So now we're going to move on to some food updates. Uh, the reason that we're looking at food updates is because there is an application to the natural health products side. We've seen in terms of gluten labeling that uh, we've, the NHP labeling is following the direction of the food labeling. As well, any a lot of the reasons that uh, companies have looked to the NHP regulations to market their products are because of the increased flexibility in formulation and claims that they find on the NHP side. So as things move on the food side, you might decide that it's more beneficial to classify your food and for regulatory purposes as